Um, let's get started. Uh, here are the progressive news headlines for today. First of all, before we get started with the headlines, I don't know if you're watching on Facebook, my Facebook page, YouTube, wherever you're watching, don't forget to request your absentee ballot right now. If you're not going to make it to the polls, do it now. You can do it at unt.blue forward slash ballot. Again, it's unt, kind of a shortened version of unite, unt.blue forward slash ballot. No matter where you are, no matter what state you're registered in, that's how you get your absentee ballot. I just went to the New York State website uh, and somehow clicked through and figured it out. Uh, it hasn't come yet. So we'll see. I'll give you a report on how long it takes to get here. Otherwise, I'm driving back to New York to vote from here. My secret bunker in an unknown location. <laughs> Unfortunately, my unknown location is a purple area where I'd rather be voting here. But as it turns out, you cannot get, you have to have a driver's license or some kind of state ID to vote. And you have to get that at the DMV in this area. And the DMVs are mostly closed. So you have to make an appointment and there are zero appointments to be had between now and like four months from now. So I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I guess I'll just remain a New Yorker forever and vote there. Hopefully my, my vote will count. Here are the headlines. Oh, yeah, let me get you these. I know you love these images. The, the headlines are nothing without the photos. Am I wrong? No, I'm not. Here we go. Let's do this. Ah, Mr. Trump. I don't like him so big. Let's make him a little smaller. There we go. New York Times revealed yesterday that President Trump paid no federal income taxes for 11 years. I'm sure you heard a lot of stories about that. 2017, his tax bill was only $750. Mine was thousands of dollars. How do I feel about that? I don't know. I'm taking a few minutes to process my feelings. The tax payment numbers are basically empirical evidence of Trump's long history of duplicity on his business records. They show that most of his ventures have either been abject failures or he's very good at lying. I think probably both. I don't see Trump University, you know, having a lot of uh, enrollees right now. The documents reinforce narratives about Trump that fire up Democrats, which is good because we don't need to convince Republicans to come over to our side. We only have to have our base fired up enough to go get their absentee ballots. Again, unt.blue forward slash ballot and mail it in sooner rather than later. And that's how we win. That's how we get rid of him. When we mobilize, because there are more of them than there are us than there are of them. Anyway, I don't know if it's giving pause to these Republican leading voters who might be persuaded to cast their ballot for a centrist who's promising not to do anything that progressives want, like Joe Biden. We'll see. Or maybe they'll just stay home. Either way, good. Trump's attend attempts to write off the report as fake news are unlikely to carry weight for people who are, you know, paying attention. There's the times. All right, this U.S. Census Bureau is going to be shutting down the 2020 census early. Go figure. In defiance of a federal court order to reinstate the previous October 31st deadline, the announcement came in a one-sentence statement last night. Civil rights groups that have been fighting the Trump administration, their push to prematurely shut down the 2020 census are raising alarm at Raw, uh, Ross's, Wilbur Ross, this guy who used to, I don't know, run hamburger places. Now he's shutting down the census. <laughs> Not good. Maybe it was a chicken shack that he ran. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, he wants to bypass the judge's order to extend the deadline, which activists applauded last week, the order, not the bypass, as an essential step uh, toward ensuring an accurate count for the proper allocation of congressional seats and federal funding. Again, Republicans know that there are more of us than there are of them, and so they're trying every dirty trick in the book. So if you're going to get your ballot, I also suggest you fill out your census form. You can also tell your senators to ensure that the Census Bureau gets an, you know, extension to conduct the fair, accurate census so everybody can be counted. Go to AmericanProgress.org. They've got uh, action they're doing there. Save 2020 census. You'll find it when you go to AmericanProgress.org. 
While for-profit health insurers have reported record high earnings this year eh, amid the coronavirus pandemic, there's nothing wrong with that. Small companies across the U.S. are reported uh, reporting difficulty paying premiums for their employees. Tens of millions of workers are expected to lose their jo- jobs and or their employer-based health insurance by the end of the year. Oy. Even if they keep their jobs, uh, the businesses are likely to cut health insurance costs in order to stay afloat, or they eventually won't be able to pay their uh, health insurance costs. This is bad. Executive Director of Business Leaders for Healthcare Transformation uh, has said that we have to end, this is the quote, we have to end employer-sponsored health insurance, like with something like Medicare for All, which would be a major help both for the employees and the business. Uh, Donald Trump excuse me, Joe Biden has said he he refuses to do Medicare for all. No, thanks. He doesn't want it. So I'm still going to go out and vote for him because not only does he not see Joe Biden wants no Medicare for all. Donald Trump wants no Medicare for nobody. Keep that in mind. Do you want to support your parents? Do you use Medicare? Do you want to see them die a sad death with no health care? Painful? No, I don't think you do. That's another reason not to vote for Donald Trump. All right, moving along. With COVID-19 infection rates reportedly surging in over 20 states across the United States, nursing home advocates are urging Congress to pass a new relief package to avoid further outbreaks among vulnerable populations. The long-term care facilities that have been particularly plagued with the COVID outbreaks By the way, nearly 40% of deaths, 7% of total cases in the whole U.S. have been linked to nursing homes, not necessarily in nursing homes, but linked, according to the reporting from the New York Times. The American Healthcare Association and the National Center for Assisted Living said in a statement yesterday, without replenishing funds for federal and state agencies, including nursing homes and assisted living communities, they could find themselves uh, less than prepared for the challenges of the upcoming cold and flu season, of which Everybody is just kind of terrified. Do you get the flu shot? Do you not get the flu shot? Do you? What do you do? Do you stay home? Do you start staying home more than you were staying home before? I don't know. While Democrats in the House passed a $3 trillion relief package, which you all well know is called the HEROES Act in May, they ain't done cuts since then. Nothing. Republicans in the Senate have refused to bring the bill to the floor, a new one. You know, the HEROES Act... Mitch McConnell, you need to call him up and demand that that turtle bring the HEROES Act to a vote. 202, this is the phone number, 202-224-2541. We should get like a, let's get an image of that, Alana. Put that up on the screen because people need to see that thing. They need to put it on your speed dial. Mitch McConnell's phone number because you're going to have to call him a lot. You probably have it already because our beloved audience of you uh, are very active people. All right, within just weeks to go between before the November 3rd election, voting rights advocates have advanced on key fronts in the legal war. We have scored some victories that make mail mailing voting easier, ensuring that votes cast by mail are counted and protected. Uh, and to protect the worldwide, excuse me, the wide distribution of mail ballots in some states. This is the good news for today, huh? I think so. A review by the Washington Post of nearly 90 state and federal voting lawsuits found that judges have been broadly skeptical as Republicans use claims of voter fraud to argue against voting changes. The review finds judges are declining to endorse the GOP's arguments or are dismissing them entirely. And in no case did a judge back President Trump's view, refuted by experts, that fraud is a problem significant enough to sway a presidential election. So there's a progressive win to end our day on. I like. I'm happy about that. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little like thumbs up, okay? I know there's a lot of you who are new and I'm happy to have you here. So check out the rest of Act TV's great stuff. We got the Black Power Magic Hour with Messiah, we Rhodes, who's a filmmaker. We've got uh, James from the internet doing his very important rants and topics. So if you're watching on Facebook, get on over to our YouTube page and, you know, give us the thumbs up. I'm Juliana Forlano. Find me, follow me on Twitter if you're still Twittering or following on Twitter.